Today we are going to be going over this problem of the Balkan Math Olympiad. This was problem number 2 on the 2002 BMO. The problem state says, given A1 equals 20, A2 equals 30, and the recurrence relation AN plus 2 equals 3AN plus 1 minus AN, find all integers n for which the quantity 1 plus 5 an times an plus 1 is a perfect square. When is this a square number? If you want to pause the problem, if you, sorry, if you want to pause the video and give the problem a try, do so now. Now that I hope you've given the problem a try, let's first try to delve into the number theory of it. As is typical in number theory, you should always try to factor stuff out. So, Rearranging this, we do get 5an times an plus 1 equals m squared minus 1. m squared minus 1 is obviously factored as m plus 1 times m minus 1. And so you have an interesting factorization. m plus 1 times m minus 1 equals 5an times an plus 1. Now, we're at a good stage now. In number theory, as I've always mentioned, you should always sort of factor we have factored now we got to look into you know either greatest common divisors or whether this is actually co-prime let's look at a few terms of this sequence so we have a3 would be that would be 30 that would be 90 minus 20 that would be 70 and well one thing to notice is that they're all multiples of 10 and that's pretty easily provable you know by induction well, if an plus 1 is a multiple of 10 and an is a multiple of 10, then obviously an plus 2 is a multiple of 10. And being multiples of 10, they're obviously even. So you've got an is always even, an plus 1 is always even, 5 times this is again always even, even plus 1 is always odd. So you have m is odd. m is actually a number like, you know, 2k plus 1. So I can replace that, and uh, I can say that this would be, I can, well, factoring out, that would be 4 times k times k plus 1 equals 5 an an plus 1. Of course, k and k plus 1 are co-prime. Now we just got to know, well, are an and an plus 1 co-prime? If not, what's their greatest common divisor? By seeing a few examples, you see that, okay, well, they're not obviously always co-prime. However, they do, ob they do always seem to share a factor of 10. And it seems to be the greatest common factor. How do we prove this? By induction, actually. And it's not a very hard proof at all, actually. You have, let's say, you want to find the greatest common, devis denom sorry, greatest common divisor of an and an plus 1. Let's say that this was 10, right? And now let's say you also want to know the greatest common divisor of an plus 2 and an plus 1. By using the Euclidean algorithm, this is greatest common divisor of an plus 2 minus an plus 1 and an plus 1. Again, using it, that would be instead of just minus 1 an plus 1 that would be minus 2 an plus 1 and using it yet again would therefore be the greatest common divisor of an plus 2 minus 3 an plus 1 and an plus 1 but wait a second this quantity right here oh my god my circling is bad but this quantity right here this is actually just the expression for an, or rather negative an, but negative doesn't really matter because, you know, negative is not a big number, so it doesn't really change the greatest common de denom divisor. So therefore, this would be the GCD of an plus 1 and minus an, which is, as we know, 10. So by induction, I can therefore say that the GCD of an with all a, with an plus 1 is 10 and this holds for all values of n okay so well whenever you do have uh, you know a greatest common divisor of 10 it's 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 usually smart to bring in a substitution so 
Let's just rewrite our let's just rewrite our equation here. You have four k times k plus one equals five a n times a n plus one, and we know that the GCD of them is ten. So let me just let there be a b n a sequence b n that is equal to a n over ten. Now, well, the thing about b n is a well. Once we do actually substitute it right into this equation, we get 4k times k plus 1 equals 500 bn times bn plus 1. But bn and bn plus 1 are actually co-prime. Why is that? Well, because, you know, an and an and plus 1, their greatest common divisor was 10. But once you take that away, if, once you divide by 10, of course, you get that the greatest common divisor of bn and bn plus 1 is actually 1. So they're co-prime. And, well, we can simplify this. We can, you know, do some canceling. That's k times k plus 1 equals 125 bn times bn plus 1. Right then. Uh, this is co-prime with this, and this is co-prime with this. So we can just do some direct substitution. Let's, let's just go through cases, okay? Let's just, let's just do a case bash, as they say. So case number 1 would be, let's say bn is equal to k and uh, sure bn is equal to k and let's say the 125 bn plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 well that would mean that bn plus 1 equals 125 bn plus bn plus 1 as in the next term of the sequence well, this is obviously false. The difference between bn and bn plus 1 is much bigger than 1. And for you to even multiply it by 125, this has never happened. I mean, you can pretty easily prove that, you know, bn plus 1 minus bn is greater than 1. Because you have this, the recurrence relation still holds. You know, you have bn plus 2 equals 3, bn plus 1 minus bn. And if you do have this recurrence relation... From there, you can quite easily prove that bn plus 2 minus bn plus 1 is still greater than 1. So this is just not happening. So case 1 is impossible. Case 1 is impossible. No solutions for that. What could the other case be? Let's see. Case 2. Uh, let's, say, well, let's say k is 125, right? And that would mean then k plus 1 is equal to bn, bn plus 1. So that means uh, bn and bn plus 1 multiply together to give 126. Okay, uh, we know b1 is 2. We know b2 is 3. We know b3 is 7. And then b4, b4 would be 21 minus 3, which is 18. B5 would be uh, 54 minus uh, 7, that would be 47. Okay, let's see now. Which two numbers here multiply to 126? 2 times 3, no. 3 times 7, no. 7 times 18. I know 18 times 5 is 90. And uh, adding a 36, that's 126. So yes, B3 and B4 works. Of course, B4 times B5 is going to be greater. So, okay, we do have N equals to... 3 must be, we must have n equals 3 then. Uh, well, when n equals to 3, uh, 1 plus 5 times this. Let's, we, we're going to have to verify the solution, by the way. We've just found that if case 2 is the case, uh, then it necessitates that n equals 3 is a solution. But we have to really check, is n equals to 3 actually a solution? Let's, let's find out. Uh, we know that, okay, we have 5 times 126 plus 1. Actually, it's going to be 126, uh, 0, 0, because you've got bn is actually, 10 times bn is actually an. So when we're checking whether 1 plus 5 an, an plus 1 is a solution, we need to, again, check for an. So, okay, we have 12,600. We've got to multiply this by 5. That would be 63,000, and you add a 1, so that would be uh, 63,001. Right then, 63,001, you know we know that 25 squared is 625, 
and I guess if I made it 250 squared, to making it 250 squared would have been 6,200, 62,500. So 251 squared now would be 62,500 plus 500 uh, plus 1, which would be 63,001. So okay, we actually do have a squared, and it's 251 squared at n equals to 3. So righty then, we have a solution. We have n equals to 3 is a valid solution. All right, let's check for more cases. Case number 3. We can have, instead of k being 126, so instead of this being matched to this, we could have k plus 1 is 125. That would mean k equals 124. But actually, wait a second. When k equals 124, that would mean that bn times bn plus 1 equals 124. But obviously, that has no solutions, as we've just checked. So, all right, case number 3, no solutions. Let's move on to yet another case. Case number four. All right, then. Case number four would be, I suppose, if k is bn plus 1. Yeah. Let's, so case number four would be bn plus 1 equals to k, and k plus 1 equals 125 bn. So that would mean... Uh, bn plus 1 equals 125 bn minus 1. One thing is, we have our recurrence bn plus 2 is equal to 3 bn plus 1 minus bn. Uh, obviously, this bn plus 2, it's less than 3 bn plus 1. Or in other words, bn plus 1 is less than 3 bn. So, it's really impossible for it to equal 125 times bn. And this minus 1 is just a very small number because we know that bn is an increasing sequence. It increases by at least once. That's because bn plus 1 minus bn is greater than 1. So, yeah, there's really, uh, there's really no, uh, no solution in this either. Uh, what else could be a case? So we've matched k with... Let's just see whether we've actually exhausted all possibilities. We've matched k with 125. We've matched k with 125bn, I think. Uh, have we done that? Have we matched k with 125bn? Oh, we haven't. Okay, so I guess that would be case 5. Case 5 would be k is 125bn, and k plus 1 is bn plus 1. One or rather, one twenty-five bn plus one equals bn plus one again, using the fact that bn plus one is less than three bn because obviously you're always minusing some quantity. This case has no solution as well. So we've checked five cases just to make sure. So yeah, that's that's it. That's that's also been done. I think yeah, we've done all the cases. Right then. So out of doing, out of checking all of these cases, which were five cases, and not too hard to check, we found that n equals three is the answer. The only time that one plus five an times an plus one is a squared is at n equals three when you have two fifty one squared, and that's the problem solved. Do leave a like and subscribe if you like problems like these. I'll be doing more Olympiad problems.